Hey, hey, segways. I know I don't normally make videos like this. In the past, when I've made a video as a response to a video I've already made, it's usually because someone's attacked me and I'm responding to that. But this one's a little bit more positive. Before I get stuck in the video, I just want to show those of you who don't watch my live streams my little setup here. I got the Grim Reaper, or Grim Reaper. Mrs. Geek's crochet Grim Reaper. I got him like hung up. He kind of looks like he's on a noose, like, bleh. but uh, I don't know, it looks kind of fun up there. So, for those of you who haven't seen it, I made a video on the Paranormal Files about a week ago. You'll notice in this video that the pinned comment is from Colin of the Paranormal Files. He addressed a few things, some I agreed with, some not so much, but Colin was very respectful in doing so. Well, after he made that comment, Colin and I got chatting a little bit back and forward in some private emails. Now, don't worry, Colin. I'm not going to share any of the private information said in these emails, but I will give the gist on some of the things we talked about. The big one to start off with is that Colin was sharing his concerns on some of the really nasty, toxic comments that he's been getting. People have said some very nasty things not only to him, but to his wife and his family. And I just can't condone any of that. I really can't. Now, I will say this. I genuinely don't think the majority of the debunking community are the ones sending these comments, these hate comments. I think the majority of the people in our community know not to send these comments, especially in the video itself, I said this. Now, I am a firm believer that if you put something out there for the world to see on this platform, that you have to expect criticism. Obviously, Side Eye Guy is no exemption from this. How dare you! But I'm not a total dickhead. So whatever I have to say about Colin, because not all of it is going to be sunshine and rainbows, can we please not give him too much hate in the comments on his videos? And even dial it back just a little bit in this video. I think that's fair. So all I can really do is say things like this in my videos and just hope that those watching my videos respect this. I cannot control what anyone says. And I have mentioned this many times that I am a strong advocate for free speech. I really don't like deleting comments, even if they're aimed at me. The only times I'm really going to delete comments if it really is something very nasty and toxic and bigoted in some way. Now, in all honesty, I do think the majority of the really nasty, toxic comments are coming from people outside our community. At least I really hope that is the case. Because even though I am still a small content creator and my videos for the most part don't get mega views like the Paranormal Files do, that video at the moment is still sitting around 23,000 views. Of that 23,000 views, not all of them are going to be from the debunking community. Some are just going to come from people who come over to watch these videos because it's YouTube. Anyone can come into any video and watch it and leave a comment at any moment, of course. And it's more than likely they will not listen to me when I say don't be nasty to the people I make videos on. I want to clarify that I think it is absolutely fine to be critical on other people's work. If Colin has something in his videos that you don't agree with and you think should be critiqued, absolutely. But I'm pretty sure we can all do this without insulting the guy's looks, his weight, his intelligence, his wife, his parents. We don't need to do that. And I will defend that I think the majority of the debunking community are not doing that. But if there is a minority doing that, please, please stop. And I don't want this to come across like I'm lecturing people. You're all free to do and say whatever you want. And I am by no means saying that I am innocent in all this. In that very first Paranormal Files video I ever made, the one where they went to the Hinsdale house with Exploring with Josh, I said some things about Colin that I regret. All jokes, mind you, but still. So I have made these kind of mistakes myself. All we can do is learn from our mistakes. I am certainly trying to learn from my mistakes. Whether you agree or not in some of the decisions Colin takes with his videos is neither here nor there when it comes to insulting his looks. So about the video itself, what I'm about to say hasn't actually come from Colin. Now I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I believe Heidi is a 100% attention seeker. I do still think there's some psychological issues here that is stopping her from grieving in a healthy way. However, what I have read in the comments from people claiming that they know Heidi is that maybe she has actually used Colin and the paranormal files for her agenda here. From what I hear from others, she seems to do this party trick with people quite a lot. And for those of you who don't know what I mean, you really should go watch that video first before you carry on any further with this one, really. I mean, that, that does make sense. So this is the original thumbnail that I used when I made this video about the Paranormal Files and Heidi. During the back and forth I had with Colin, he explained to me that he believed this was too harsh. He did not think that he was exploiting a grieving widow. He did not see it that way. And from what I understand, in the moment, Heidi really did want to do this for Colin, and Colin just filmed it. Now, I can completely understand that the morality of this is 
should Colin have filmed this and uploaded it to YouTube because it is a very uncomfortable watch. But if Heidi wishes it to go on YouTube, Colin is then faced in a very tricky situation. And honestly, I don't know if there really is a black and white answer for this. Personally, for me, I don't think I would have uploaded it to YouTube. But that does not mean that Colin necessarily exploited Heidi because he did put it on YouTube. It could well be that Heidi has kind of exploited herself. So after having these back and forth with Colin, I decided to change the thumbnail of my video and the title, and now it reads this. And I want to explain why I did this. I think this is a good move for us debunkers to make. We get called toxic all the time, and I'm not talking about the community here, I'm talking about the actual content creating debunkers. This is in fact the only time a ghost hunter that I've made a video on has ever asked me to change a thumbnail or a title. And I did it. But I didn't just do it because Colin asked me to. I did it because Colin reached out to me, he was polite, and he explained to me his position on this and why he did what he did. Now, he could have come at me with threats, he could have come at me with Lego mumbo jumbo, he could have been a bit of a dickhead about this, like many other ghost hunters have been in the past to other debunkers, but he did not choose to do this. And I do respect that, so I decided to change the thumbnail and the title. And what was really interesting after doing this is without me asking, I did not ask him or expected him to do this. He changed the thumbnail and the title of the video he made while at Heidi's house. Because one of the big criticisms I made of Colin during that video was that he used the word demon in a video where it clearly didn't belong. Heidi herself said there was nothing demonic in the house. So this is the original thumbnail and title that Colin used in his video. And this is the new title and thumbnail that Colin has changed for this video. Now, honestly, I think this is a fantastic step forward between debunkers and ghost hunting content creators. I really do. And in all honesty, I'm not even saying this to pat myself on the back. I don't really see this as a victory for me or even really the uh, debunking community specifically. I see this as a step in the right direction for the paranormal in general. If a channel as big as the Paranormal Files can listen to a small channel like me and actually listen to some of the points that I'm making and some of the criticisms that I'm making and maybe agree with them rather than just ignoring us, I really do think this is a good thing in general and I applaud Colin for doing it. I really do. I think this is great. And perhaps in the future, maybe other channels can start listening to some of the things that we're saying. But I do believe the only way to really do this, to really get through to people, is by talking to people at a human level. As debunkers and as a community, if we really do want to see change, we're going to have to do that by talking to people at a human level. Now, I'm not saying there's no place for jokes and banter because, you know, I'm the side-eye guy. This is very much what I do. But when an opportunity like this comes up and we're able to have a civil discussion with other content creators, bigger, much bigger content creators, and they are willing to listen, then as far as I'm concerned, that is definitely a step in the right direction. And one big criticism that I always hear when people have a go at debunkers is this. I'm not sure what the motive here is, um, but you're, you're not going to hurt them at all. Um, you're just, you're kind of just nothing to them. I mean, that's, that's just the reality. It doesn't really hurt them and doesn't affect them at all. Now, before I go any further, if anyone knows about Mark and the recent history he's had with some debunkers, I really want to stress that this was only used as an example of some of the criticisms that people give towards debunkers. I do not want any hate towards Mark whatsoever. I really don't. You do you, Mark. All good. The reason I use that clip is because this is the kind of thing I hear quite often, that we debunkers don't make a blind bit of difference in the grand scheme of things. And I don't think that's actually true. Now, I want to stress, Colin did not have to do this with the thumbnail. I very much appreciate that he did. And I think it shows a really good step in debunkers and ghost hunters finding a common ground. And as I say this, by no means am I speaking down to Colin. The guy has been doing this far longer than I have, and he's far more successful at it than I am. And in all honesty, I wish nothing but the very best of success for Colin and his family and his wife and Connor and the Paranormal Files in general. Good luck to him. But I like to think that the reason Colin did that is because he saw the criticisms I made of him in that video and thought they were valid. He didn't just dismiss it as, oh, what's this 24,000 view channel doing talking about something as big as the Paranormal Files? Now, granted, he could have done that. And I know of other ghost hunting channels that would do that, Twin Paranormal. But Colin clearly isn't like that, and I do think he deserves some respect for this. 
And it just goes to show that the debunkers are making a difference here. This has pretty much been our goal. I know a lot of people think we're just here to shit on other channels and just to create drama and havoc. But that's not the case. Many of us debunkers just want to change things for the better within the paranormal field. Whether you're a believer or a skeptic. And funnily enough, something else came to my attention only just earlier this morning before I was about to start this video. One of my awesome patrons actually messaged me earlier saying that in Yasko's most recent video, he puts this as text in the actual video itself. This is a full length scary movie video. The content you're about to watch is very scary. The content presented in my movies is intended to be enjoyed for entertainment. The purpose of my movies is to scare you and provide nail biting, I think he's meant to say a nail biting, edge of your seat experience. Hope you enjoy. This isn't part of his description where you could easily miss it. And I know in the past I've said he should put fictional entertainment as his disclaimer, but to be fair, he doesn't have to listen to everything I say. This is a great step in the right direction for someone like Yasko. Because as far as I'm concerned, this is showing that it is fictional entertainment. And for him to put this in the video, rather than just in the description, is a great step forward. Now I've got to admit, it feels a little bit weird saying well done to Yasko, but well done to Yasko. So that's pretty much it for this video. I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts about some of this and some of the back and forth I've had with Colin. By no means am I trying to dictate to anyone what you should and shouldn't say to Colin or any other ghost hunting content creators out there. Because when all said and done, when you put your stuff out there on YouTube, you have to expect a little bit of hate. It just comes with YouTube. Your whole channel could be dedicated to gardening and you will find some people out there that's like, no, you don't plant a rose bush like that, you dickhead. It's just the way the internet is. There's a lot of just angry people on the internet and whatever. For me personally, I just ignore it. I understand for other people, it may come in different forms and uh, they may not be able to take it quite as well or they just it may be too below the belt too often whatever it might be i just think we can all just do our best here just to not add to it i genuinely do not believe the debunking community is toxic i really don't as much as we get accused of it i don't think we are i think there's some stray people that come in that, that give us a bad name but i think we can definitely do our best and just not add to it. So thanks very much, everyone. I really appreciate you taking the time to listen to this video. All the best. Cheerio. Grim Reaper.